Oversold, he said, to the 9-11 community. It's been grossly exaggerated and that Stephen Jones and people like yourself who've worked with them have been infatuated with thermite. Well, you, you might say, I would rather say that nanothermite is just one in a whole series of observations and findings. Each of them is in contradiction with the unofficial, official version of events. And that is true. And that is true. I mean, the free fall and the and the stand down of the uh, of the air force is, and just to mention too, is uh, just as as violating the official account. So in that sense, I agree. I would it, the nanothermite should be seen in a context. Along with all the other observations, the thermite was used. I mentioned, I mentioned the ion spheres. There's no way that could be explained without the ap application of thermite. Molten iron, iron was pouring out of the south tower prior to collapse, and iron melts at 1538 degrees centigrade. Molten iron was observed in in the rubble after the collapses. It took three months to put out the fires in the rock. Who, who saw the molten iron in there? I have counted a, at least 23 witnesses, and we have uh, there is photographic evidence of that. Well, I spoke to one of those people who is, I spoke to several of those people who it's, it's, it's been suggested have been evidence of that. But one is one is the controlled demolition expert Mark Loiseau. Another is Professor. Hassan Astane, who's a structural engineer at uh, Berkeley, California. Both of those have been suggested that they said it. When you actually go to speak to them, they say, they say something else. They saw they 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 saw the the the, the rubble afterwards smouldering. There had been smouldering, and there had been fires below the surface in in the rubble. So it hardly suggests that there is molten iron flowing. Through. And no, I don't find anyone who actually says it. Well, should ask, said it. you should ask NASA then. Did you ask them? Because they flew over. I've seen, I've seen the, the temperature. It happens at the high temperatures afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. 750 degrees, six days after six days of showers. Mm -hmm. It was pouring down cats and dogs. And what's under the ground in the debris? Is, that, is it material that could burn? It actually kept on burning for three months. Yes, it did. Yeah. It took them officially the fires. Mm. Were Is there any combustible material in the dust, in the in the debris from the World Trade Center, do you think? Any combustible material at all? Not which can keep on burning for three months. You need oxygen. You need oxygen to do that. Yeah. And there, there were eruptions of strange chemicals coming out on specific days. I have to then use some technical Yeah. Right. They were like volcanoes. There were chemicals coming out of the ground on very limited time of them, like explosions were going on down in the rubble. And we are talking about, I have to give you some chemical names, styrene, benzene, toluene, and some very strange chemical called 1,3-diphenylpropane, which has never been observed after. Mm -hmm. conventional fires. Mm -hmm. Why should it take three months to put out these fires and all the fires? Mm -hmm. Why should it take three months? Mm -hmm. Something was happening in ground zero, which is beyond the official story. One, um, the FBI special agent I spoke to said that she says the, the continued doubting of what happened is unfair to the families and friends and belittles those who lost their lives on 9-11 and obscures the real story of what happened. Do not think that the family and friends deserve to have a real investigation of what happened? She doesn't, no. She doesn't. Don't you think that it would be fair to the family and friends to have an investigation. Well, I'm asking what she says. She says she felt. Yeah, but this is a very Sorry. this is a very personal thing. It was personal to her. So she's gathered up body parts of people who have been killed there. She felt quite hurt about the fact that you and others continue to question whether people actually 
on that airline were killed there. Of course they were killed. Of course they were killed. I see. Oh, you seem to be suggesting the airliner didn't crash at the Pentagon. Of course, people were killed. Quite clear, but, of yeah. course, people were killed. Right. And we are talking about that this crime was never investigated. And I, you may have your own opinion, but I think that we honour the, the these people who were murdered best by by carrying out a criminal investigation and persecuting the perpetrators. Do you think by doing what you do, you take a, presumably what you're saying is, is, this, is, this, is this a gross crime, do you think you're taking a personal risk yourself by, by coming up with the, doing the work you're doing? I have no way back. You can, you, if, you, if you fight, you might lose, but if you don't fight, you have lost. And you'll keep fighting? I have no way back. I have six grandchildren. And what is going on here, in my opinion, is our very civilization which is at stake. There is no way that our civilization can continue without facing these unsolved questions of 9-11. So I think about... this is very serious. I'm talking about all the things you love. I'm talking about democracy, I'm talking about welfare, I'm talking about the elderly, I'm talking about the children, I'm talking about economy, I'm talking about environment, I'm talking about the very future of our Western society and our civilization. And I'm very concerned and I think there is no way our children can expect a future like ours unless we face the unsolved questions of 9-11. Okay, cut. Cut. Do you have any children? I do. You have children? Yes, I do. Yeah. That's why we're here today. It, I would always look to them desperately in search of the truth of everything, in every story I ever do. And I ask any question. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So what do you sign? What do you, what do I sign? I sign up to the chance of the BBC's Charter and the Ofcom. What you, the, the crucial point of what you're agreeing to is that it is an editor programme. You need to understand it's an editor programme because it's a BBC Two programme no. and it is a programme about 9-11 and the theories about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or translate your constitution and you waive and revoke with any moral rights you may have in them? We, we have, you, the point is we have the copyright in the, in the interview because we, we broadcast it because we have to be able to broadcast it to us, we give it to other people. It's a, it's a program that's made by the BBC and it's sold worldwide. It goes out worldwide. Yeah. But you have so to, we have to have the copyright to be able to do that, that's what it says. You have your copyright of your own footage. That's what it's saying, yes. And you don't have the copyright of our well, footage. I'm not, I'm not taking that tape, am I? I'm using my tape, yes. Okay. But maybe that should be specified. No, you don't need to specify. Well, you, you, can, you can have a note, but it's, it's clearly talking about our interview. No, it's talking about... Thank you. It, it contribute. Contribution is clearly the tape that I've got. I can't take your tape because you haven't given it to me or you won't give it to me. It doesn't, it's going to be exactly the same anyway. But if you want to make that point, it's perfectly fine because it won't make any difference at all. Because it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, clearly it's about talking about the interview you gave me hmm. on record. And to be clear while you're filming this as well, I wouldn't talk about anything off the record and wouldn't normally have people filming while I'm talking about things that are off the record. So that's absolutely clear again. Maybe stay in, however you want to. Do you want to do that first and I can 
Do you want to scan that? Or, or I can fax it to you from London. Or I can give you a copy of that as it is, and then I'll send you the I'll fax you the site. I think I'll add the thing about your footage, your tape. So your contributions. Uh, you assigned to the BBC the copyright uh, to and all the rights in your contributions. But is that really, is that really true that this is the footage, uh, this is the tape actually of your machine? Yes, the tape of my machine, yeah. the interview that you gave. Why, why is it then your contributions? It's just that it's using it as a phrase to describe the, what, how you've, you've um, contributed to the programme. So it's saying, and seeing as we work in the broadcast media, your contribution has to be in the broadcast medium, and that is yeah. tape. I so can't really see any general, other explanation is, for is it. Foot, is footage an English word? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's an American. Can I write the copyright to your footage? Recorded by the BBC. You can, you can scan it and scan it, send me a PDF. Yeah, yeah okay, I'll do that.